So we're faced with a problem. How do we find the sum of xi squared? Well, when we're dealing with these sorts of problems, it's often useful to start by writing this down in as much detail as we possibly can. So the sum of the xi's is going to be x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4, all the way up to xn. And we're squaring that, so we're multiplying it by itself. So we're multiplying x1 plus x2 all the way up to xn by x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 all the way up to xn. Now, when we're multiplying these two brackets together, we'll get all of the squared terms. So we'll have x1 squared, x2 squared, and so on. So we can start by writing down that we'll have all of the squared terms. But then we'll also have all of the cross product terms. So if we start with x1, x1 will have cross product terms with x2. It'll have cross product terms with x3, with x4, with x5, with x6, all the way up to xn. And because you've got the reverse going on, you'd have x2 interacting with x1, x3 interacting with x1, we'd have two lots of those cross product terms. So we can write down plus two lots of x1, x2, plus x1, x3, plus x1, x4, plus all the way up to x1, x n. But that's just when we're holding x1 as the first term. What about when we move to x2 as the first term? The cross product terms, we've already dealt with the x2, x1 in the first row, so we're going to have x2 times by x3, x2 times by x4, x2 times by x5, x2 all the way up to x2, xn. So we have plus x2, x3, plus x2, x4, plus all the way up to x2, xn. We do the same with x3. We've already dealt with x3, x1 and x3, x2. So we go to x3, x4, then x3, x5, and so on. So that'd be plus x3, x4, plus x3, x5, plus all the way up to x3, xn. And we'd carry on doing this as we increase the first term all the way up to xn minus 1. But the only term for xn minus 1 to multiply by, because it'll have already have been multiplied by x1, x2, x3, x4 in the previous lines, will be xn. So xn minus 1 times by xn. So how do we write this out in summation notation? Well, the top line is really simple because this is just the sum of the x squared. So this is going to be equal to the sum from i is equal to 1 to n of the xi squared. Now, the bit that's slightly trickier is the next bit. So we've got two lots of the sum and we're increasing in two dimensions. As we go downwards, the subscript, the index on the first term is increasing. As we're going along here, the index on the second term is increasing. So let's write this out using two summations. The first summation relates to the first subscript. The second summation relates to the second subscript. So we can see that we're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to n minus 1. So this first summation 
is going from j is equal to 1 to n minus 1. That relates to the first term in here. So in the first row, all of the first terms have x1. In the second row, in the, in the second row, all of the first terms are x2. In the third row, all of the terms are x3, and so on. So we're going from 1 to n minus 1, which is our final term. And then the second summation relates to the second term. And we're going x2, x3, x4, x5, all the way up to xn, x3, x4, x5, all the way up to xn. So we're taking the value that j takes, the first term takes, and we're starting at the term after. So we're going to start at k is equal to j plus 1, and we're going to go all the way up to n. So we start at um, k is equal to 2 here, k is equal to 3, k is equal to 4, all the way up to k is equal to n. And we're finding the sum of those xj, xk terms. So this is what we would get if we're squaring the sum of the xi's. By squaring the sum of the xi's, we have the sum of the xi squared plus all of these cross product terms in there.